Hey, everybody, we are back. And man, behind the scenes, has it been fun here at Geekscape.net? Uh, so you may be tuning in for Poof the Magic Game Show. Guess what? You've got to wait another hour. But what could be better than live improv comedy than theater? So here we are doing uh, a live performance of the Charlie Brown Christmas special script. And I couldn't do this without my Christmas 365 co-host, Dylan! Hey, hey man! Hey. All oh right. my God, things have been nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's such a damn good song from Chris Vafaius of Punchline. For sure. Thank you. I wish we did more fun. video stuff because I love the uh, the stock footage stuff you just did. Like, like I love watching our Christmas 365 video intro. So it, I wish we got to do more video stuff because I do you, love that little compilation. Do you remember me making it like within minutes? Before? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> you were sitting upstairs on my couch. I'm like, I think no. I could finish this in time. Dude, it was uh, so it's so good though. <laughs> hey, Al. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me check one thing and then we're going to introduce uh our, our actors for the day. Well, you uh have the lead role in tonight's play you are you are charlie brown uh i am i'm going to be playing linus uh yeah. and no we're still sitting at 1135 dollars yeah. so let's see if we can if we can make that move while we're doing this live production for all for of y'all sure. and i think it is interesting that you and i kind of uh switched our roles almost in how we kind of are on the show i feel like like I feel like you're much more of the Charlie Brownie, except for the Jesusy thing that Chris just put in the chat. Yeah, no, I mean I'm probably more Jesusy than you, but uh, as far as bit. our opinion on the Charlie Brown Christmas special, you are way more the lion Linus with uh, yeah. peace and love and understanding, and I am more the like bah humbug, it's slow and boring. Um, but let's bring in a few of our actors. Uh, I want to bring in this actress first because. Man, has she been going through a whirlwind on what roles she was playing today? <laughs> uh, my, I never had a big sister, but if I did have a big sister, I would make her my big sister. And also, her birthday was just a couple days ago. Yes, so, it Marissa, is. Yay! Hey! Hey! oh my gosh, <laughs> roles have changed so many times. Uh, but you will be playing Sally and Patty in tonight's production oh i'm so excited yep i can't wait you know what i was really going for tree number three so i'm kind of mad that i didn't get cast on what i was hoping i could get but i'll take i'll take sally and patty the, yeah no i i uh i'm sorry that i had to upgrade downgrade upgrade downgrade <laughs> um, no worries i'm so excited to be here you guys let's do it next let's bring in the person who didn't know about the time change until <laughs> two minutes ago the real star uh, she, she will be playing the role of lucy tessa Woo! i'm Woo! awake you guys i'm awake <laughs> yeah, our podcast. Tessa, how many missed calls did you have i don't even know i haven't caught up on the text all i know is i'm here <laughs> i guarantee she woke up like someone's dead <laughs> much. Marissa died. You need to read his patty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also let's let's bring in because it seems weird to just have a Marissa. We need Marissa's best friend. Yeah, to be up in My here better too. Half. Um, so one of the three narrators she'll be reading as narrator number two. She'll also be reading as Frida and Violet, Jackie of the Jersey Ghoul. Hi. Uh. Jackie, thank you for joining us. Nothing's changed for you. You, you've been. <laughs> you didn't even have to respond to if you were cool with the time change because Marissa said yes, and I knew you were in the same house. So we were good there. And now let's bring in. Uh, well, first of all, before we do anything, big congratulations to Jackie and Marissa for joining the Geekscape Network. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, we're so excited. Yeah, they'll we're be doing their own segment next year for the live stream as official Geekscape members. Uh, yes. And also joining the ranks of the Geekscape team, uh, we've got two people. I'm going to introduce my upcoming podcast co-host first here, uh, reading as Schroeder, Pigpen, and narrator number three, Joe of Fright Woo! School. Hey, hi, uh, friends. Very, very soon, maybe dropping on a podcast app on Christmas Day, the White People Problems OC podcast, uh, where we are reviewing every episode of the OC together. 
It's the best name for that. <laughs> that was Joe. That was Joe. I, my my idea was the um what you say podcast, but he <laughs> says white people problems. And it's like, no, white people problems, because then we can do other shows. We can do yeah, Gossip Girl. Yes. The little liars we've been talking about. I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, if Joe is the Fright School student, uh, as narrator number one, and Shermie, a character that I do not remember, uh, Joshua is rolling in as the Fright School <laughs> Teacher, have you gotten tenure yet? <laughs> uh, I wish. And I wouldn't have to worry so much. I uh, have no idea. What Joshua is my horror big, and I am his horror oh. little. There oh, we go. Oh. Yes, perfect analogy. Oh, you're going to make me cry some more like I've been doing yeah. all day watching this damn stream every time you yeah, show you those. Guys, a big shout out to all of, not just the people in the chat. Thank you for the people who've been holding it down. There has not, I am very proud to say this. From 9 a.m. when we started this stream, there has never been under 20 people watching at any given moment. And I think the Aww, fact that awesome. there have been 20 eyes on this stream for almost 12 hours now is fucking incredible. So thank you so much to everybody. Thank you for the people who are donating. If you can donate today, that would be amazing. The link is going to be active until at least the end of the year, if not longer. I would love for us to be able to hit that goal before New Year's Day. Uh, but if we can even get halfway there before today's over, I would be so thrilled with that progress. And um, honestly, dude, man, hey. Matt, thank you, dude. Like, this is incredible. You do this, like, every year, man. And you're always thanking all of us. And you're <laughs> yes. thanking the people in the chat. Thank you, dude. Yes. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll do some thank yous at the end, but first, <laughs> you can thank me later. Yeah, you can thank me, Dylan. All right. Um, I want I want us to imagine a copywritten piece of piano music that I can't play right now. It's <laughs> 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 beautifully over over the set of music, and then Josh. All right. Oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, there was no rehearsals for this. No. Everybody had fun. Just doing it. All right. Here we go. It was finally Christmas time, the best time of the year. The houses were strung with tiny colored lights, their windows shining with warm yellow glow only Christmas could bring. The scents of pine needles and hot cocoa mingled together, wafting through the air, and the sweet sounds of Christmas could be heard in the distance. Fluffy white snowflakes tumbled from the sky onto a group of joyful children as they sang and laughed skating on the frozen pond in town. Everyone was happy and full of holiday cheer. That is, everyone except for Charlie Brown. I think there must be something wrong with me. I, I just don't understand Christmas, I guess. I, I might be getting presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I'm still not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Maybe Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Brownest. Charlie walks through the snow thoughtfully, goes to his mailbox, pokes his head inside, looks disappointed because it is empty. Hello in there! <sighs> Rats. Nobody sent me a Christmas card today. I know nobody likes me. Why do we have to have a holiday season to emphasize it? Violet enters, reading a Christmas card. Thanks for the Christmas card you sent me, Violet. I didn't send you a Christmas card. Don't you know sarcasm when you hear it? Everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves, but Charlie Brown was still sad. Charlie sits in front of Lucy's psychiatric booth. I think you have a customer. I'm in sad shape. Hold up there, Charlie Brown. I need five cents from you for my kind of advice. Charlie reaches in his pocket, drops a nickel in her money can. Boy, oh boy. I love the beautiful sound of cold, hard cash. That beautiful, beautiful sound. Nickels, nickels, nickels. That beautiful sound of plunking nickels. All right. Now what seems to be your trouble? I feel depressed. I know I should be happy, but I'm not. Well, as they say on TV, the mere fact that you realize you need help indicates that you are not too far gone. I think we better pinpoint your fears. If we can find out what you're afraid of, we can label it. Are you afraid of responsibility? If you are, then you have hypengeophobia. How about cats? 
If you're afraid of cats, then you have aleratophasia. Are you afraid of staircases? If you are, then you have clamicophobia. Maybe you have thassalophobia. This is the fear of the ocean. Or jeffarobia, which is the fear of crossing bridges. Or maybe you have pantophobia. Do you think you have pantophobia? What's pantophobia? The fear of everything. That's it. Actually, Lucy, my trouble is Christmas. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I feel sort of let down. You need involvement. You need to get involved in some real Christmas project. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Me? You want me to be the director of the Christmas play? Sure, Charlie Brown. We need a director. You need involvement. We've got a shepherd, musicians, animals, everyone we need. We've even got a Christmas queen. I don't know anything Double. about directing a Christmas play. Don't worry. I'll be there to help you. I'll meet you at the auditorium. Incidentally, I know how you feel about all this Christmas business, getting depressed and all that. It happens to me every year. I never get what I really want. I always get a lot of stupid toys or a bicycle or clothes or something like that. What is it you want? Real estate. Snoopy enters hauling a large brown box overflowing with colorful holiday lights, etc. Charlie follows Snoopy to his house while Snoopy creates a large roost display. What's going on here? Snoopy grins, hands Charlie a flyer. Find the true meaning of Christmas. Win money, money, money. Spectacular. Super colossal. Neighborhood Christmas lights and display contest? Even his very own dog had gone commercial. The thought of the contest made Charlie Brown feel positively sick. Was money all anyone cared about? Charlie Brown couldn't stand it. Charlie throws the flyer in the air, walks away. Sally and Charlie enter. I've been looking for you, big brother. Will you please write a letter to Santa for me? You write it, and I'll tell you what to say. Charlie was in a hurry to get to the school auditorium on time to, for, to play rehearsal, but he couldn't say no to his sister. Charlie takes a pen and clipboard from Sally. Okay, shoot. I've been extra good this year, so I have a long list of presents that I want. Oh, brother. Please note the size and color of each item and send me as many as possible. If it seems too complicated, make it easy on yourself. Just send money. How about 10s and 20s? Tens and twenties? Oh, even my baby sister? All I want is what I have coming to me. All I want is my fair share. Charlie rushes off to the auditorium. Lucy speaks as children are dancing around to music Schroeder is playing. Our director will be here any minute and we'll start rehearsal. Here he comes. Yay! Snoopy booze. <laughs> Man's best friend. We're going to do this play, and we're going to do it right. All right. I'm here to assign roles. Frida, you're playing the innkeeper's wife. Do innkeeper's wives have naturally curly hair? Pigpen, you're the innkeeper. In spite of my outward appearance, I shall try to run a neat inn. And Shermie, you're the shepherd. Every Christmas is the same. I always end up playing the shepherd. Snoopy was delighted to play the the roles of all the different animals from sheep to cow to penguin. Linus, memorize these lines so you can recite them on cue. Linus, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> this was going so well. <laughs> I definitely wasn't muting my mic to eat dinner. Um, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I can't memorize something like this so quickly. Why should I be put through such agony? Give me one good reason why I should have to memorize this. I'll give you five good reasons. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Those are good reasons. Christmas is not only getting too commercial, it's getting dangerous. And get rid of that stupid blanket. What's a Christmas shepherd going to look like holding a stupid blanket like that? All right. Let's have it quiet. Places, everybody. Schroeder, set the mood for the first scene. Schroeder begins to play piano, and the cast dances. Oh, no, no, cut! Cut! It's all wrong! Let's rehearse another scene instead. Pigpen's dust is ruining the style of my naturally curly hair. 
Sally watches Linus intently, rest head on his shoulder occasionally. Isn't he the cutest thing? Good grief. There's no time for foolishness. Let's take it from the top again. Schroeder plays piano and everyone dances. What's the matter? Don't you think it's great? Charlie shakes his head. Look, let's face it. We all know that Christmas is a big commercial racket. It's ruined by a big Eastern syndicate, you know? Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial. What our play needs is the proper Christmas mood. We need a Christmas tree. Hey, perhaps a tree. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree. That's it. Get the biggest aluminum tree you can find. Maybe paint it pink. Charlie Brown left Lucy in charge of rehearsal and set out with Linus to find the perfect tree for their play. Charlie and Linus enter tree lot. Go to small green pine tree on a simple wooden stand. Gee, do they still make wooden Christmas trees? This one seems to need a home. I don't know. Remember what Lucy said? This doesn't seem to fit that modern spirit. I don't care. We'll decorate it, and it'll be just right for our play. Besides, I think it needs me. Charlie Brown and Linus return to the auditorium. We're back! Charlie Brown proudly presents his tree. Boy, are you stupid, Charlie Brown. You were supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? You're hopeless, Charlie Brown. You've been done before, but this time you really did it. The children and even Charlie's loyal dog, Snoopy, laugh as they exit. Charlie is alone on stage when Linus approaches him. I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Is there anyone who understands what Christmas is all about? Sure. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. <clears throat> Lights, please. <laughs> and then they, and there they were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were sure afraid. And then the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be of all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find him wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. And there was an angel of the multitude of the heavenly host. And God said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth goodwill towards men. Anyway, that's what Christmas is about, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, inspired by Linus' story, picked up the tree, smiling, and walks outside. He stops and stares at Sky. This took a really weird turn, Linus. <laughs> Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and I'll decorate it. And I'll show them it really will work in our play. Charlie continues his walk home and finds Snoopy's doghouse with, pri with a prize on it. Charlie grabs an ornament from the house and puts it on the tree. The tree bends. I killed it! Everything I touch gets ruined! Charlie Brown walks away from tree slouching. Meanwhile, the other kids circle tree while Linus straightens the branch. I never thought it was such a bad little tree. It's not bad at all, really. Maybe it just needs a little love. As the children look at doghouse and back to the tree, they decide to take the doghouse decorations off and put on the tree, making it beautiful. Charlie Brown is a blockhead, but he did get a nice tree. The children begin to circle the tree and hum, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, leading Charlie Brown to come back outside. What's going on here? Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Charlie Brown! Brown. Nailed it! <laughs> his little tree that no one had wanted, and he could hardly believe his eyes. His friend's efforts had transformed it into something truly special. And everyone sang. Surrounded by his friends, Charlie Brown realized Linus had been right about the true meaning of Christmas. This was the Christmas spirit he had been looking for all along. At last, 
the season seemed 100 times brighter. And for Charlie Brown, it was truly the merriest Christmas ever. Yay, we did it, guys. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well, well done. within our hour. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! How Jesusy! I, I, dear <laughs> Lord, I always feel, and I'm, I am positive without even a doubt that I am the most Jesusy person on this call right now, and even that <laughs> makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, like it's so like just out of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> like, like it's just this. This kid is just like depressed, and he's lonely. And apparently hearing about the birth of Jesus is going to make him feel better. Like, I don't, there's, yeah. there's Linus, zero connection. Linus, Linus really pulled a big, like, I'll be praying for you energy. Yeah. <laughs> that was a thoughts and prayers moment, if you're asking me. That's all I'm saying. Like, That's what this is, Chris. That's what this is. Yeah, we're already, yeah, this is we're called there. fill in time. Yeah. <laughs> I am yet praying for you, Charlie Brown. I love that. <laughs> Um, I, I I disclosed to the group before uh, we started that I've actually never seen a Charlie Brown Christmas before, so that's I guess wild. that's on the top of the list now. Oh wait, uh, still for this it's season. like fifteen minutes. Like, oh, I thought, yeah, it's, I literally it's like, twenty-five <laughs> minutes because I can't get them back. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly. How. Wait a minute, no, I genuinely thought you meant like until today when I watched it. You came in blind, huh? <laughs> no, I came in fully blind. I'm like, I. So you had you know, no idea where this was going. Yeah, I. <laughs> I, only, I know what the, the ending. <laughs> I know what the tree looks like. Like I know what the tree looks like because I had a buddy who he bought himself a tree, like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, when he was yeah. stationed in Iraq, because like that just makes perfect sense. So I knew that stuff, but I like I've not seen the special, so I came in blind. I so you were all the special for me. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I do. I love to hear that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to break a little bit of the fourth wall, but I know that there are at least two of my friends who are upstairs watching this in my living room, and they are more than welcome to uh, come downstairs and <laughs> grab a microphone and join in on this party round post post game. <laughs> Matt <laughs> Kelly's pulling like a Garth. <laughs> I'm having. A I'm good having time. a good time. Not, <laughs> not. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> yeah, I was about to, I was literally just about to be like, so let's go around and talk about our favorite thing about this Charlie Brown Christmas. <laughs> no, let's actually let's talk about and like, like three quarters of this podcast, like when it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But no, like I, I'm gonna throw Tessa up there for a second uh while I set up these microphones. But you uh <laughs> you specifically friend. told me that you were watching watching game tape to learn how to pronounce all of the different diseases. Yeah, and I still effed one of them up but <laughs> uh that's a lot of phobias uh lucy nails them all so yeah i was practicing <laughs> that's it <laughs> matt's like i was really hoping that went longer you did great on that I can well, it's really good. if you like i have a list <laughs> Go through and read Marissa, the DSM. Can Go you talk ahead. about the emotions you went through as you get getting bounced around? And could you maybe talk about it for a No, you can minute? you can fuck right off. I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can fudge right off, uh, Matt. Kelly. I told I told oh, my students to turn in, and I'm so, uh, tune in, and I'm so glad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. just kidding. Okay. I'm just. <laughs> no, I will say my hot take. I don't know that Charlie Brown stands up anymore. I had to watch it with a group of kids in, in preparation who were very hard on me and my acting. So I was really glad I didn't have to be do Lucy. <laughs> but um, I, my hot take is a bunch of 12 year olds were horrified by this in any way a human being could be horrified. So I don't know I... that in 20 years when we're doing this Geekscape and we're still doing this reading, we should switch to a different show. Because this Marissa, is Marissa, where, yeah. where was Zero it though. cringe? Where, it was did so they, <laughs> was it Was cringe. it cringe? Did the... the word cringe came up at least twice. <laughs> they also said that if this was a re like they wanted to like file an investigation against the kids for bullying of Charlie. Um, there was a lot of layers. A lot of layers. They said like, that we know why he's depressed. His friends yeah, suck. His friends yeah. are the worst. Yeah. And you know what hit them the hardest is how much his dog sucks. Because you know what? Your dog should be the one thing in life that doesn't laugh at you in the face of everything. And yet that little mofo. Just throw that out there. My hot take, Snoopy on my on my S list. There I Matt, said it. You're 
muted again. So Chris had said that. <laughs> oh my god, it's like being on with my eighty-year-old uncle. Can you get this <laughs> in your show? Right? The Zoom is oh, muted. Like... There's a lot happening. Hold on a second. I want to show you something. I'm sorry, are we bothering you? Is this again in the way your night, Matt Kelly? I'm sorry. No, so look, StreamYard added this cool feature where I can put a second camera up, so you can see that I've got uh, Abby and Dave from Maximum Mediocrity trying to set up their microphones <laughs> while we're talking. That was fancy. <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. like, I will say, piggybacking off of what you were saying, Marissa, um, between Matt and I, I am definitely the one who likes Charlie Brown Christmas more, and Matt has like. I don't know, loathes it at this point. But um, I will say that Charlie Brown Christmas is very much a watch in the background for me. Like, like I just like having it on. And there's a lot of like the old Christmas specials that I feel don't hold up that is that are really good. Like just, hey, let's throw this on and screw around on my phone or something just because I want to be in the spirit, but not watching this. <laughs> I, I think at yeah. one time or another, I've referred to it as like a Yuletide Stockholm Syndrome. Like, <laughs> like I feel That's not that bad. Have, like, I have to watch it every year. Like, I'm just like, oh, great. It's that time of the year where I have to watch this 25 minute special. And it's mostly because my mom loves it so much that yeah. it's like... But but do like, you like you are a grown adult like you can say no <laughs> i'm aware of but but yeah. it's not like i'm sitting down to watch fucking emmett exactly, otter every exactly. oh, Here's the we're, thing. We're, work, we're working on matt's differentiation <laughs> yeah listen if anything i'm a slave to traditions <laughs> so for 36 years i've had to watch charlie brown's christmas you think i'm going to stop at year 37 no it's just going to keep on happening <laughs> can, I, can we put christopher falafius and i'm sorry if i mispronounced that in charge of programming for next year because i'm all about garfield christmas special well, that no, one yeah. here's the yeah. problem with the garfield yeah. christmas Please. special there's going to be a lot of There's tears no in the chat if we yeah. have to leave oh, yeah. that that sad grandma speech by the window about missing her dead husband yeah. oh, um, the oh that all sounds the delightful yeah. <laughs> i want joshua to be garfield cuz <laughs> Already well, kind of sounds funny. like Garfield already. I love I, it. I'm here for that. I love Garfield. Garfield Gar I, call I Garfield. also, you know, Garfield, I will what's say. What's your opinion on lasagnas and Monday? <laughs> Mondays can definitely fuck off, and I love a lasagna. There we go. <laughs> He's already He's a good actor. I'm here for it. Um, I did want to say, though, in rewatching this today, because I feel like we think that, like, um, this like over commercialization of Christmas is like something new, you know, like it's something that's been not, you know, like everybody, you know, you see all this conversation every year and I'm like, God, this was written in like the sixties, wasn't it? When was yeah. this released originally? And this was an adaptation of a comic first. I'm pretty sure. Oh, so probably something from either the late fifties or, yeah. you know, whatever, regardless, I just found it fascinating and rewatching it today that I'm like, man, we've been having this conversation for like 60, 70 years about, you know, Christmas is like over commercial, a little bit. I know. I, I have words. 1965. Um, yeah, 1965. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. We had our research team on it. Yeah. Thank Woke you. up five minutes ago and she's doing our research. <laughs> <laughs> doing a and she admits when she talks. So she's uh, she's hired. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But like, I almost feel, and we've discussed this before, Matt. We have a soft spot for that commercialization. Like, yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, I am totally one that's like, Oh my God! Christmas crunch is out. Let me grab ten boxes of that. <laughs> and load up on it. Well, remember this is the Captain thing Crunch, but Christmas shape. Oh, bro. Sorry. Yeah. I... Well, you remember last. Go year... to the store. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I think last year we were told that we had to buy the, the Christmas crackle or whatever. Oh, like that's topper. right. And we had no idea what the fuck we did not was know what the fuck people were talking about. They're like Christmas crackers, but they're yeah. like, uh, yeah, we had no yeah, you idea. You pop them open. Happened. They're so yeah. fun. No, yeah. no they're super Wait fun. a minute. You two never did a, cr a Christmas cracker? Listen yet. here. You don't know what Christmas Time crunch out. is. What? It's all over the <laughs> fucking <laughs> grocery stores throughout all of America. <laughs> Okay, hold on. on. I support Marissa first of all because I support women. Second of all, uh, <laughs> second of all, like you two, like are you have the Christmas podcast? I am from a full island in the Pacific and have done <laughs> the Christmas cracker thing. So my, my literally, literally, I think that's what we we did land on that it wasn't an American thing. Yeah, like it did. Like that's where yeah. we landed. So yeah, it didn't so, originate. But it's yeah. a I mean, British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I was I gonna say so. my yeah. my my connection with it was that I realized 
that Where it was Captain that, Crunch we, is full American, yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah. Now I realized that it was like, oh, that's the thing that kills Mr. Bean at the end of his Christmas special. Like that was my my connection with it. Um that's freaking delightful. You two not knowing what a cracker is is the most American thing you could have done for your podcast. So cheers and well done to both of you. <laughs> Speaking of America, what is what are you wearing, man? Is that a, a Christmas suit? I love it. Oh yeah, you didn't see that earlier. So oh my god. No, I wasn't. Delightful. I was unfortunately. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Are they muted again? Because I'm seriously going to so. fire him. I think Matt's so. muted again, <laughs> and I can't hear it. Fuck is, how, do you, how does everybody put up with him all day? Don't don't mess <laughs> with the teacher time, and dude. the muting. Like, it's like get get stop being muted. <laughs> with the teacher and the what? muting can't He's can't with muted, the muting. Yeah. Did he unplug himself? Now his plug. He really is like my my drunk uncle <laughs> at Thanksgiving. Stop in. using AOL, Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, he's gonna dial it back in real quick. He's sitting there talking still. Marissa, did you have to run? You sounds like you had to run the family zooms during the height of COVID. <laughs> you um, did I you guess. also have the? Did you also have like the family members who would like not mute themselves and talk shit about the other people? No, and- <laughs> I oh, am I, that family member. I was, but I, I thought- just- <laughs> I caught many a kids playing Fortnite while I was trying to teach <laughs> during the Zoom era. So. I used to joke that in the ones with glasses, you could see the Call of Duty on the reflection. Yeah, I'd yeah. be like, oh, good kill, good kill. Right. Oh. right. I, I solved the mystery. So yeah. when you add the second camera, it doesn't carry over the audio to that no. second camera. So if I take uh, the direct <laughs> shot off, it cuts the audio. Don't worry, we were so supportive and understanding. No, I heard. Yeah. No, I, yeah. my head turned <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> you kind, guys... very generous, you know, for the fact that you've been doing this for, you know, all fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was an exhaustion from, even, I think I talked about this at the very beginning, but I, so from midnight until 9 a.m., I just ran a nine-hour video of, like, highlights from the year before, but I was so stressed out that it would, like, cut out or you woke closed. up every hour didn't you so i had it on my tv in my yep. bedroom so if i wasn't awoken in the middle of the night by the sound of live music or like something like that it was that i was asleep dreaming about watching the exact segment that was playing because that's, it was like that's awesome it. matt if only you had that level of commitment to this particular stick that we just did we'd be in really good shape right now well, also uh, this will be waking me up next year when i play suddenly it marissa that. vanishes from, from the screen <laughs> Also, as a silver lining, what I really got out of this hour is that, like, you know, Jackie and I were a little apprehensive. You know, we were like, Geekscape, this is the next level. Like, we better be on our freaking game, no, cleaned good. up. You can't even remember to unmute your mic. We're going to be in Like, we're going to be wow. good. Wow. <laughs> She's These lovely people brought me an no, sandwich that I me. desperately wanted to eat, so yeah. I kept muting my mic to eat so you didn't hear the sweet sounds of me slopping down a Yo, beef and cheddar. He in the wants of to show. eat. He's yeah. got to eat. Because we, we had the plan to like, okay, okay, you want to come over? Like, yeah, yeah, I know where Matt Kelly's house is. Yeah. So Dave texted me. He's like, you want some RBC? He's like, hell yeah. I'm but, like, okay. Yeah. And also in their defense, they were planning to get here when I wasn't going to be on my, on camera for an hour. <laughs> There's a lot of... There's a lot of shifting of plans at the last second. Did we say seven or seven thirty? I don't. Remember. You said seven. Oh, okay, <laughs> and I was like, okay. perfect. Yeah. Um, so right. let me ask you guys a question, and, and it's a genuine question because Chris did bring up Garfield's oh, Christmas special. I'm open to that, but is there another special we would want to reunite this squad and do a script reading of? Because I have an idea that just popped into my head when Jackie, or sorry, when Marissa was talking about her kids' review of a Charlie Brown Christmas of the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer TV special Ooh. script. Oh, fuck yeah. I want to do that. Uh, Double down the bullying, I say. Can I be, I the, do can the, I be the coach that yells at everybody? I want to do the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Hell <laughs> fucking yeah, dude. I watch that oh every God. year on Christmas along with the Anna Nicole Smith Christmas special. Um, <laughs> so I either want to do that delightful. one or I want to do Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. Oh, that would be I don't know what that is. Wild. Oh, Joshua, knowing you, you, yeah, you would, you love, would love this shit. Uh, are you familiar with the show Community? Oh, yeah. I so mean, it, I said that very excitedly. Like, I, <laughs> you know, oh, I have heard of that. I know yeah. that word. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> community <laughs> engagement. That's yeah. what we're doing here. Um, I have heard of the community. I've not. I have not yeah. actually really it's, watched it. They they did a bunch of different Christmas specials, but one of them was literally like, it was an homage to all of the different um christmas specials of the of the past so it was like all in claymation and stuff oh. but it was also simultaneously a person having a major mental health breakdown and that was why it was presented as that it was like that was oh. how they were seeing the world mm -hmm. um so it's a it's a good one and then chris threw out here that we could do peewee's christmas special mm. that would be tough because there's so many like one line yeah. celebrity cameos but then he also said the Office White Elephant episode I with love the iPad. That episode. <laughs> like, I'd be down. I, I mean, y'all know y'all know what I'm gonna say, and only and not because we have a podcast about it coming out, but like the best Christmaca ever, season one of the OC. Uh, <laughs> we should do. We should definitely do. Um, we just cut out a bunch of like the superfluous drama about you know saving um, a wilderness area in Orange County. No, I think we should. I love how I love how this year we were like we're gonna do Charlie we Brown Christmas, a classic, and now we're like, well, what do you want to do next year? The OC season one. <laughs> you OC, know that season seminal one. fucking. <laughs> right. Hey, it created. <laughs> I will not. I will not sit here and uh, oh, for no! this. It, uh -oh. it created. Uh, it create not since Festivus <laughs> did it create a new a television show. Create a new holiday that people from all over this nation. I say this nation because I doubt anyone else <laughs> um, felt seen by this. Felt seen by uh this representation of you know a dual a multi-faith household <laughs> yeah and I'm, no. i'll take i'll take that defense one step further and say the soundtrack for that episode mm -hmm. is really really good yeah. and those songs are stupidly yeah. better than i just want to say i never good. said it was bad <laughs> i'm just saying going yeah, from classic. a special that is shown every single year and is shown multiple times a year <laughs> to the oc Yes. I, like, Dylan, you, you remember, Dylan, keep it up and we will do the and Nicole uh, Smith. Uh, we special. have to we have to get those you know the um oh gosh, why is my brain not working today? It happens uh, when you plugs. do it. We gotta get those plugs in. It's the idea. So we're plug O C O C Um so Dylan, do you remember what the original script read idea was, which I'm still not against doing, but it is insane. I don't. What what was the original idea? It was originally to do all two hours of It's a Wonderful Life. Oh shit. That was movie. your original idea. <laughs> Holy God. fuck, but I am down for that as well. I think that one <laughs> I think a when Christmas I, movie house. Yeah, I think when I originally pitched that idea, it wasn't as a live script read. It was like, we'll hit up every single one of our guests and we'll assign them a role and yeah. they can like record their dialogue on their own and I will oh. assemble it in yeah. in chronological order and uh Where's yeah. the fun in that? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little sad that everyone ignored my idea, which was anytime one of us messes up, we all have to take a shot. And hopefully by the time we're done, <laughs> one of us has passed out. Why did nobody like no? And like when because I put that jo up, there was Jonathan like, had a meltdown earlier with an <laughs> about something earlier in the day. <laughs> so I don't think doing shots live while we're doing a script reading. Oh, is I a think great I took it for that moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were up, we were upstairs watching this, and I as we were like watching you guys do it, I said. This can be a drinking game easily. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent, a million dollar idea. No, the the so I'll say this again. Yeah. Uh, there was the wrestling show, <laughs> Matt Mania, and yeah. I didn't know what the plan was for Matt Mania, but I was excited for Matt Mania. <coughs> and they like get on the the screen, and they're like, "All right, we got about thirty minutes in this joint to do uh do our wrestling talk." And the one guy's like, "Speaking about joints," and they hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the largest blunts I've ever seen in my entire life. And they start smoking up. And it was like within 10 seconds of that happening, they're like, all right, so we're going to just name wrestlers and try to guess what they should get for Christmas this year. Oh. And I get a text message from David that says, now this is content. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Chris Mavaios texts me and goes, I didn't give a shit about wrestling talk, but I do give a shit about two <laughs> kids talking about buying wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed like, it. I had no idea it was amazing. About. I was like, this is the best thing on this entire stream. We should just shut oh, it yeah. down. We've, we've hit the pinnacle of this. That was the that was when the view count was at the highest. That was the highest viewing <laughs> was in that moment. Yeah. 
it was also. I'll tell you what. Next year, we do a script reenactment of that. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, nothing but love to T Call and G One to the rescue because I am. Those are good guys. That was legitimately like so much fun. I was like, this is the best. I was pretty salty to have been invited to this and that, that, to be fair. (laughs) (laughs) Where are they based? They're in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So he, it's perfectly legal. He wasn't. They, uh, Joshua, you, you we can we can order blunts like for know, delivery. Right? You don't, you don't have to go. <laughs> no, right. so yeah. That's why he had some on his. Yeah. Person. Um, you, New Jersey. Boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it is about that time. So oh. I will go around and let each person do their uh, their little goodbyes uh, here. Just real quick, since you're down here, you two first, and then right. uh, yeah, oh. then we can cut us. Yeah. What are you two up to? Hello, what's going on? Uh, my name is David. I- I'm Abby. <laughs> <laughs> and we make the Maximum Mediocrity podcast. We also make the Your Anime is Trash podcast coming soon, where we interview people that aren't famous but should be. And then we also uh, talk mad shit on your favorite animes. Yeah. Boom. All right. So long, guys. Nice seeing you. All right. <laughs> so to our lovely team of actors, I'm going to go one at a time here. Uh, in reverse order. So I think we start it with Joshua. So let us end with Joshua. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, I'm Joshua, uh, co-host of Fright School with Joe, where every week we watch a horror film and uh, try to talk about it academically with our queer lens. Uh, blah, blah. All of those things. Queer queer things. Thank you all. This was so much fun. Love so you. long, Joshua. All right, Joe, I think you were the next one that came in. Uh, I co-host Fright School with Joshua, where he makes me watch things uh, that are uh, supposed to be like supposed to be horror, like The Abyss. I I don't get it. Um, I only say he's looking at that. He's yelling at me. I'm gonna get a text in a minute. Um, and uh, soon to come, uh, I am also co-hosting uh, White People Problems, an OC recap podcast with Matt Kelly on the Geekscape Network. Very soon. Bye, y'all. Yeah, Much we love. Can't wait till you guys get to Riverdale. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jackie. Woo-hoo. So, Jackie, I am a co-host of Jersey Ghouls with Marissa, and I will let her do that spiel. I also have a podcast called The List We Missed, where me and my friend AJ are finally watching the movies that everyone else already has. All right. So long, Jackie. Marissa. Hi, I'm Marissa. Uh, yes, I'm the other half of Jersey Ghouls. We are a horror podcast as well. We try to put a feminist lens on things. We try to look at things both academically and also with a little bit of fun too. And we are so thrilled to be joining Geekscape. Thank you so much for having us on tonight. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. All right. Thank you so much, Marissa. And then finally, Tessa. Hey guys, I am, <clears throat> excuse me. I am Tessa Markle and I am the co-host of Fem Regard Podcast a podcast created by women for independent filmmakers. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tessa. There he is, my hetero life mate. Dude, for life, man. This was great. That went really well. Except for all the technical difficulties on the person who runs a podcasting (laughs) help company. Yeah, but I mean, it's all right, because as we were saying on the show, dude, you have been doing this since midnight last night because i know how you are because you're just like me you did you woke up every hour thinking that something was going to go wrong while you were sleeping because i do that stuff all the time man so no props to you man you've been killing it today uh well i do have one piece of big exciting news before we get prepped up for this next segment and that is got a couple more donations while we were doing a script reading, and we are now up to 1,550. Oh, shit. Of the 4,000. That's awesome. Level. So stay tuned, y'all. We're, we're only $500 shy of hitting it. We're, we're so close. So yeah, man. Let's, uh, let's get there. We've got a couple more cool segments. I want to see who just popped in. <clears throat> oh, we got, all right. We've got, the poof the magic game show guys in the wings so dylan we yeah, love man. we love the christmas 365 oh theme God, song we do well we do. i've got something exciting okay and that is a special performance <gasps> and who does the theme that's song. that's what's gonna happen Mine is coming up next Dude, that's what's gonna happen and then poof 
And then poof. Guys, every Monday, new episodes of Christmas 365. We know that the Christmas season has has ramped up. You are super excited. But guess what? When Christmas is over, we keep that feeling going all year long. Every Monday. Merry Christmas, Matt. Merry Christmas, Dylan. Oh, whoa. listening to the Geekscape Network.